This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It's all about global connections. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Global Connections. And with me is my co-host, essentially, <laughs> Carol Mon Lee. Hi, Carol. Hi, Jay. Welcome back from Alaska. Yeah, I, I managed to get back. It's all about travel, you know. Travel is broadening, and you've got to keep on traveling. Even if you don't really want to, you, you still have to keep on traveling for so many reasons. And I think uh, people in Hawaii, uh, they need to know that. They need to get out. Um, otherwise, we, as a, as a community, we are less aware about what goes on. Um, we have to go to Europe. We have to go to mainland, certainly. We have to go to, we have to, go to, we have to go everywhere. And one of the places that seems to be de rigueur these days, I mean that in every sense of the word, uh, is Alaska. And the, the funny thing is, um, when I told you that I was planning to go Alaska, you told me that you were also planning to go Alaska, and like one week apart. Exactly. Same, same idea with the cruise ship, and for that matter, the same cruise line, and for that matter, the same ship. Unbelievable. You're reading my mind again. Right. Same itinerary. <laughs> Yeah. But I was in a different suite. I was in 9048. Do you remember your suite number? Your, oh, your 9048 number? is terrific. Yeah. Yeah, we were in, in, in 4302. Okay. 4203. Whatever, 4203. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the, right next to the water line. If the thing sank, we'd be the first ones to go. Oh, my goodness. Go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you knew where the lifeboats were, right? <laughs> Our On station. Deck six. <laughs> On deck six, our station was G. What was your station? M. Okay. <laughs> now, she's talking about a muster station. Exactly. And, uh, you know, pursuant to SOLAS, that's the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, uh, which I think is, a, is an, out, an outcropping of the, of the Titanic <laughs> way back 100 years ago uh, with the Coast Guard and trying to save lives at sea. They had this convention. And one of the things the convention requires, as adopted by the U.S., is that you've got to have, and the Coast Guard has regulations on this, is that you've got to have a, 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 a mustard drill. And that's what we did. And that's right. what you did, and that's what I did. And it's actually before the ship sails. Right. So if the ship sails at 9 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. pencils down, mm -hmm. forks and knives down, <laughs> if you're right. having dinner, and you got to go and do mustard. They were pretty serious about it, weren't they? Absolutely. But I think that's comforting, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, you, know, I mean, you know, there's a deck six if Carol didn't mention it, is the, is the promenade deck, which is like, you know, the old Titanic <laughs> promenade deck. <laughs> it's, the, it's the one you can walk around the whole ship. Right. You know, 360 degrees. And um, I think it's 1,500 feet all around. And if you walk mm, three times or so, you get to walk a mile. There's a plaque, and I don't know if you noticed, there's a plaque that says that. And so, you know, after every meal, it was our commitment, my wife and me, that we should walk around we didn't walk a mile, but we walked at least once in order to, you know, digest and not be sedentary because it's easy. Am I right? It's easy to be sedentary. Very easy. And actually that deck, uh, part of the uh, uh, deck was reserved for runners. Did you notice yeah, the yeah, right yeah. side was for Walking, runners? Walking, running. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and that's the deck where they had the mustard drill. Right. And so you remember that because you, you pass under your letter every time you, every time you walk around. Oh, gee, right. I know, gee, that's where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, cruising, um, last time I cruised was 50 years ago, and um, uh, that, was on, that was in the Luralene, yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, if you asked me, you know, two weeks ago what to expect, I couldn't have answered the question. Uh, and I bet it's the same with you. It's, you imagine things, but you don't know how it works. There's so many details, so many things you have to know and follow and learn, so many things you have to check every day. You brought all your brochures. There's a lot of written material involved, a lot of information. It's not that easy. You, you have to follow the schedule, the ship schedule. You have to make reservations in the various restaurants and for the entertainment and all that. Right. Um, it's, and it's not only that, there were a lot of announcements that were made from a loudspeaker, but the loudspeaker did not project into each room, I, each I know, cabin. Yeah. It was only outside, and once in a while I would hear this voice. Quick, but, open the door. <laughs> <laughs> but who would want to do that? I was, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, reading yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I think we missed a lot. <laughs> yeah, right, it's true, yeah. Uh, we, we caught it once in a while when we heard the sound, we quick open the door and we hear something. 
But, uh, you know, it's, it's challenging because if you don't do anything, if you just, you know, get to be a couch potato or an eating potato, as the case may be, you, you're going to get bored. And I think part of, part of this experience is not to get bored. You have well, to uh, be, you know, you have to acclimate yourself to the life on the ship. Right. Well, um, the Alaska cruise, and everybody has said since I've gone and actually before I went that this is really being able to see Alaska from a ship is really one of the most beautiful cruises in the world. And part of it is because uh, there's so many stops along the way, as opposed to a long ocean cruise where you don't get to get off the ship and you may have three, four, five days on a ship and not see anything but blue ocean. And then you are really fending for yourself to yeah. entertain yourself. At least here we stopped, you know, you and I both, our ships stopped in four ports. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that's good yeah. because they're not all the same and they, they show you what Alaska is like. And there are certain common denominators that you saw in each port that were a little surprising to me about how Alaska works as a state, as a community. It's, it's not like Hawaii at all. You know, it's, it's a lot of mountains. It's a lot of trees. A lot of trees, green, green trees all over those mountains steep mountains, mountains you could never really walk on. You'd have, yeah. to, you'd have to climb inch by inch to get up those mountains. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually, the, the weather, I don't know how it was for you, but for us, oh, uh, you told me it was cold. Well, it was really cold. <laughs> My wife had a pair of gloves. She was wearing the gloves every day. And it right. was overcast and yes, there rainy. was fog and rain, sometimes heavy rain. And so, I mean, it's not, you know, I know there are beautiful views out there, but we didn't see a lot of them because for most of our trip, only day we had sun was the last day pulling into Vancouver. Yes. The last day. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, you know, you had to live in this, this sort of imperfect environment where you couldn't see it. Right. And uh, I guess that's okay. That's, that's the way it is. Well, and you know, we both traveled in July, and we've been told that July is actually the warmest month <laughs> to visit Alaska. Uh, it was lovely from, you know, just to see the vastness and the beauty of the mountains and the water and the wilderness and and um, but coming from hawaii it is a shock as to how cold it is every day yeah yeah, yeah it, it was cold every day and, and after a while i get used to it and you tend to spend you know if you're outside and you go through those big wooden doors these big wooden or sometimes sliding doors to get from say the promenade deck inside um the temperature variation is like 20 degrees maybe right. more uh, and it's really lovely to come inside from right. the cold. <laughs> but most, most of our time, I'm sure the same with you, was spent in, inside, not outside. Right. Absolutely. The ship, of course, had a pool and jacuzzi. See anybody? Um, well, not until the very last day did we even dare to venture out onto the deck with the pool and the jacuzzi. We didn't even dare because it was so cold and overcast until the last day. And as you say, that last day, we're already heading down toward Vancouver where it's warmer yeah. and, you know, it's, it's sunnier. So, yeah. um, but I understand that particular ship in the winter months goes down to Central or South America. So, so that would be easier. Yeah. But there are, you know, a number of jacuzzis there, a number of pools. And as you say, the last day, people were out there, especially the kids. And they had a lot of stuff for kids. It wasn't overwhelming for kids. I didn't feel that, you know, kids are underfoot or anything like no, that. No, they have a kids' camp. They have a kids' camp, and they have kids walking around mm -hmm. with a counselor thing. And, um, and there's a basketball court and various things like that. Yeah. So they try to, you know, do it for everybody. I thought the entertainment was pretty good, actually. Uh, they had, they, did you see this? You know? I saw a couple of the shows. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. A variety show. Variety shows, right. Yeah. There was a comedian, a woman comedian. Oh. There was an evening of the staff, the, inter, the international staff from the ship itself, yeah. dancing and singing. And, um, you know, it varied in terms of ability, but it was fun to watch. The, uh, the variety show, uh, which featured a, a lead who was actually very modest. She would never admit that she was the lead, but you knew she was. Her name was Shari. Shari, ooh, it'll come to me, Shari, Shari. Um, I'll think of the last name <laughs> later, but it was a, it was a French name. Yeah? And uh, she was actually a professional out of Chicago. Singer. Uh, singer and dancer, oh. variety. Mm -hmm. And they had about 10 people in the cast. I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw this. No, I didn't see that one. Um, it was excellent, mm -hmm. so much so that we went back and saw it again. Oh. But the comedy, the comedy was interesting. There was one guy by the name of Ziegfeld. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Ziegfeld was his name. Um, Michael Ziegfeld. It was ridiculous. 
uh, was very funny. Funny in the sense that he would engage with the audience. He'd walk right up with his microphone, and he'd find something amusing to say with no matter who he talked to. <laughs> and you got to be good for that. Right. And then there was, a, uh, there was a guy the next night, Sam something. And Sam was gross. 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 Mm. And, you know, we met some, humor, huh? met some of the people on the ship, and they were really puritanical people. Oh. They were, you know, they were Trumpers and uh, came from the South and all that, you know, just very uh, on the right Conservative, wing side. Conservative, yeah. And one woman said, I, I'm not going to go to this entertainment until I'm sure they're not going to use any dirty words. Well, she would have really hated Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Even me, I was getting uncomfortable with Sam. <laughs> so how about the food? Did you like the food? I, I felt that the food was, um, uh, it was prepared in a central kitchen somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and there was a lot of similarities between restaurants that was supposed to be different. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, you had the bean salad in one restaurant, and then next time the bean salad in another restaurant, same, same salad. Right. <laughs> What's going on here? You know? Well, I thought what surprised me was here we are in Alaska, where it's fresh fish is everywhere, bountiful. And the floor, the stops that we made, the towns that we made, they're noted for their their catch, fresh halibut and fresh salmon. But whenever there was salmon on the menu, it's we Atlantic would ask, salmon. yeah, they said, well, it's frozen. There's no fresh, fresh, fresh meats or, or fish. And, you know, of course, I guess it makes sense on a ship with 2,000 passengers. They can't bring in fresh. Well, you can't. But, but here you we can't are in Alaska. buy from just anyone. Right. And you have to buy in bulk. Right. And so I, I thought they were uh, slightly you know, over-concerned about hygiene. Remember well, the thing? Of course. You walk no, on no the one. ship or off the ship, around the ship, and there's a guy with a squeegee bottle, right. and he's giving you uh, hygienic stuff for your hands so you could clean your hands off. And I think they probably have had some bad experiences because if somebody catches something on a ship where everybody's in such proximity like that, yeah. wow, yeah. the whole ship will be sick in no time at all. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the way the ships work, which I hadn't realized, is that... There are the main dining rooms, right, that the price of your ticket includes, of course, all your meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But, and, but at no liquor doesn't include an open bar at all. But if you want to have a special meal, there are, I think, four or five special restaurants, an Italian, French, a steak, Japanese. Brazilian. Uh, a Brazilian. Oh, yes, right. Uh, and those you have to pay a premium for, so you have to sign up in advance. Yeah, so it's like going to a restaurant, although yeah. it, was, it was relatively cheap. You well, know, it, was it was like half the cost of a re regular restaurant Except outside. that it was, you're already paying for your regular meal, right? right? So that's why it's cheap. Yeah. yeah, so it seems cheap, but actually it's just an add-on to what you've already yeah. paid yeah. for your regular meal. Well, we did meal. that two or three yeah. times, yeah. We did that, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it was, it was a, cut, a cut above in the yeah. sense of the dining experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but restaurants were, you know, they were ubiquitous on the ship. Right. You could stumble mm -hmm. into them all day long. Well, I think for families, that's what the, I think the appeal, great appeal for cruises is because there are so many families. And so where you're bringing maybe grandma and grandkids, then you have a variety. You can have, you know, french fries and, and hamburgers. And at the same time, grandma can get served a regular meal and, you know, everybody's happy and nobody's afraid of somebody getting lost or anything because they're all on the ship. So I think uh, we met a group of uh, 52 people who were there for a wedding anniversary for one of the family 52. members. 52. 52, yeah. And they Extensive were all, wedding anniversary. Yeah, and they yeah. were all having a great old time. But a lot of groups, people fam uh, traveling in groups, families. It's, it's better to travel in groups, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that, yeah, for something like that, it makes a lot of sense because... Yeah. You're all together, and yet you're not on top of each right. other. You're not in the same stateroom or on right. the same deck. Right. And uh, but you can get together pretty easily. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, and we're going to talk about, uh, you know, I would like to talk about the diversity on these ships because diversity is is really everywhere on these ships in every capacity. That's Carol Monley. She's co-host today on Global Connections, and we're talking about hmm, what the in inside passage in Alaska. Whoa, exciting. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech.
Uh, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're on the other side now. We're going to talk about the diversity on the ship before we go to our slideshow. You do want to see our slideshow, trust me. It's selected slides. It's not all the slides. <laughs> so, okay, diversity. A lot of diversity. I, I noticed that the minute I was so on So are you talking about passengers or staff and crew? All of the foregoing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, every language. Every language in the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of South American, Mexican, a lot mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of European was there. Mm -hmm. A lot of Asian was there from all countries. A lot of Chinese was there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess the, uh, what do you call it, Norwegian Cruise Lines knows that, so they mirror image their passenger base with their staff. And they recruit everywhere, everywhere. I, did you, I did you get so to talk amazed. to the staff, how they function, how they work? We, we talked to some of the staff, and it's interesting. They have, are on contract. So they're on contract for eight months. Uh, and at eight months, they don't have a day off. They're on cruises going up and down Alaska, up and down. And they may get time off during the day in between their responsibilities. And as each ship lands in a town or a city, they may be able to get off. But in general, they don't really have a full day off where they can go home because, of course, they're miles and miles away from home. And then they take off months at a time, and then they renew their contract and come back on. And we talked to people who had been doing that for five, ten years. So it's an interesting... Not, not a bad life, huh? Yeah, it's an interesting life, you know, when you're young without maybe as many obligations uh, to be on a ship and get to travel around the world and yeah. meet all sorts of people. Yeah. And they're paid well. I, I can't say exactly what that, that means, mm -hmm. but they get room and board for free, and then they get money, some kind of salary or mm -hmm. eight-month contract. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that works pretty well, actually, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as a style of life. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what interested me probably more than anything else um, was this thing about the entertainers. The entertainers came from everywhere. Right. So we followed two bands. Okay. Two bands. Bands. Uh -huh. and they Did you dance? In the lounge on the, uh, I guess it was the Top fifth floor? deck or the oh. sixth deck. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, no, we, we didn't dance. No, no. We <laughs> left that for the younger people, older people. <laughs> they were both right. younger and older. Um, <clears throat> so one of them was an Italian band. Italian. All four of them. There were four in this band. They all played Italian music all day. And they were charming. And uh, there's a market for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another was a uh, Spanish band uh -huh. from Spain. But actually, one of them was from Venezuela, uh, which was, or Argentina, sorry, Argentina. Venezuela has its troubles right now. Um, and they were also charming, and they, they have a great gig. It was a kind of boyfriend-girlfriend combination, right. two of them. And it's, it's a great way to spend time. I agree, there's a, there's a real benefit if you're, if you're free mm -hmm. and, and you can get away like that. So you have the, the passengers, tremendous diversity. You have the entertainers, tremendous diversity. And you have the staff in general. True. Mm -hmm. Although I would say that the plurality of it was Filipino. Yes, yeah, um, it seemed to be. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was, but it was everybody else too. Right, right. And there were a lot of Indians, did you know? Hmm. A lot of Indians, Not both in the staff and the passenger ah. base. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing that surprised me, I don't know if you felt this, is that the amount of marketing of, for instance, there's a art gallery on the ship yeah. and a major push to sell diamonds. Now, I don't recall this at all as a market that would seem to make sense. Then it was pointed out to me, well, when you're on a ship for as many days, seven days and nights, and if you're walking around and nothing else to do between meals, looking at art, I guess, is something that uh, people with suddenly having time would do. And so there's a big promotion to sell art. Personally, I didn't think the art was very high quality, but uh, it, it, it's uh, something that I had never thought of. And the other thing was... There's an art, there's an art auction there. Yeah. So it was, was he was actually doing an auction, and he was the manager of art auctions. That was his title, that guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, it's a picture of uh, uh, somebody... Peter Max. Peter Max. Oh, those, that, the uh, posters... 
Peter Max used to do posters in the 60s and yeah, 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I believe that that's all intended to try to avoid the boredom. Because if you stay exactly. inside, it's cold outside, you can't get off the ship for a day or two at a time. Um, you need things to keep you active in. And so art, art uh, auctions and sales, uh, diamonds, jewelry, diamonds, watches. You see the watches? Yes, Invicta lots of watches. watches. I don't know if it's that good, but you know, watches. So did you buy? Hmm? Did you buy anything? Not a thing. No. No. Okay. Did you? I bought some postcards. And no. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> let's see some, let's see some uh, photographs and try to describe our little slideshow here. There's my wife. You can see she's wearing gloves and she's freezing. <laughs> she's wearing a hood and a jacket and all buttoned up we can barely see her chin and that she's on she's, deck six she's right right <laughs> that's that's the promenade deck where you can walk or jog around if you like hi sharon and that's me at the mustard at the mustard drill putting on a yellow life vest yeah. with a crew man <laughs> <laughs> the staff was so friendly they would take a photograph with you anytime <laughs> Okay, and this is this is the staff at one of those restaurants. I can't remember which one it was. Looks like Seven Seas. Seven Seas, yeah. Okay. And they were so friendly. They were really they're really dolls. Yeah. And they were whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see more. There's there's plenty more here. We are going to see more. I know we're going to see more. More slides. They're coming soon. Rich, here we okay. go. Okay. There's the uh, the deck with the swimming pool. Nice and, overcast day. Yeah, a nice. Regular overcast day, but behind that door, over to the left, is is the restaurant. It's a huge restaurant. It was the garden, the garden restaurant? I think it was called the Garden Cafe. Garden Cafe. Yeah, and yeah. if you notice, everybody. And here's another picture with oh, this dozens is a, this of people. Is a glacier. This is the glacier. And of course, everybody's wearing dark jackets and hoods and you know long. Yeah. I picked this picture because I wanted to try to demonstrate how high the glacier was. Mm -hmm. That you know you can't really tell. This is at the fan tail of the ship. And uh, you can't really tell, A, how close we were. We were very close to the glacier. It almost gave me concern. And B, the glacier is like 400 feet high. Hmm. This is not a small glacier. And hmm. C, I don't have a video of it, but part of the glacier came down. It's called calving. Ca calving. Calvin. It calvin. Calving. Is that a verb? Uh, yes, to okay. calve. Yes. And um, is this the Hib Hubbard Glacier? Yes. yes. This was Hubbard. Yes, this is the first glacier, and the ship goes as close to it as it can so we can see it. And um, It's right in course, the water. It's right. just dropping fresh water into, into the ocean. And, you know, this is a moment in time. Here we are in 2017 seeing this picture of it, where 10 years ago it was much bigger, larger, taller, and in another 10 years it will be going to be smaller. Yeah. Yes, and you could see the sides of it were right. all, um, you know, soil wrote, and yes, rocks. Yes. Uh, you could see that it was shrinking, and right. and you could watch it. Right. You could watch it shrink. Right. Okay, we got more pictures. I know they're coming. They're coming soon. All right, there's Annabelle's. <laughs> you know, and there's Sharon. And there's Sharon. All bundled this, up again. This was uh, in. Um, this was in um, the last stop. Ketchikan. This is in Ketchikan. Aha, uh -huh, it's and a is, Talk about diamonds. Half of Ketchikan is, is diamond stores. Exactly. I don't understand. Are diamonds mined in Alaska? No. No. So they come from some other place, and tourists are going to come because, of course, these towns' main industry is tourism. These big ships that come in, yeah. and sometimes four or five ships at a time, unloading eight, ten thousand 10,000 people at a time. And they're selling diamonds. I just found that. As it's opposed ridiculous. to gold. <laughs> it's hard to imagine. And yeah. it's not only in Ketchikan, but it was also in uh, um, Juneau. Yes, in Juneau. Uh, big, big, big diamonds. Big diamonds. Store after store after store. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other place, what was the other place? Uh, well, we stopped in Icy Straits. Yeah, Icy Straits. No diamonds, no diamonds there. there. It was Skagway. an Indian, Indian island. Skagway had diamonds. Skagway had diamonds. So right. Skagway, Juneau, and Ketchikan, Ketchikan, all with the diamonds. And, you know, we're not talking about just one or two on a block. We're talking no. about everything on a block is diamonds. Right, right. And curios also, Alaskan oh, curios. Yeah. But it struck me that this is ridiculous. This, they're not indigenous to no. Alaska. Well, it would be like if Hawaii had a diamond market. It just isn't a place it's, it's, that people are going to come to buy so diamonds. So my wife asked one of these diamond uh -huh. merchants, you know, do you, do you stay here during the winter? What happens? And the diamond merchant said, no, we close up. We leave the premises, and we go to another place in the world, it could be anywhere, and we open another diamond store on the cruise ship route. We follow the cruise ships, <laughs> and, we, and there are places you can rent over that 
period, whatever it is, six or eight months, so where the cruise ships are coming in, then sell your diamonds, and then you move on for the next season. And now I understand more. Right. But for some reason, people are wild about diamonds. I, 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 I don't know. I think it's a, a kind of, uh, it's, I don't understand it. But let's talk a little bit about the town. So the first stop was called Icy Straits Point. And actually, I guess it's a private, private town that uh, is only open during the season, which is... It's, it's owned by the um, Clinkett. Clinkett, uh, um, Alaskan Native. Um, I don't know if they call them, they don't call them tribes, I think they call it's them tribe. communities. It's an Indian tribe. Yes, and um, it's only open during the season. That means when ships come into port, which yeah. is oh, and between... Oh, beautiful. Did you notice yeah. the incredible improvements they've made? Oh, beautiful The steel town. gangway beautiful goes on town. for hundreds of feet. And the feet. waterfront. And the waterfront and, the, and these tourist houses and restaurants. It's really very, beautiful. Very, very nice. Somebody put a lot of money into this. So I asked Harry. Uh -huh. Harry is my buddy there. Mm -hmm. He's one of the Clinkett guys. Mm -hmm. um, he was a security man. I really liked it. We, we talked to him both coming and going. Mm -hmm. And Harry said, well, you know, it's a, it's a corporation right. of Indians that owns the town. Right. And he, he was a stockholder, a shareholder. Right. And there were other shareholders, too. I asked everybody, are you a shareholder? Uh -huh. And they all were shareholders, members of the tribe. So and um, uh, he said, well, we got the money from uh, loans, but also from the state of Alaska who gives money uh, or who loans money in order that the tribes can do this kind of thing. Clinkett is uh, one of the big tribes in Alaska. Right. And they, uh, you know, I don't know about the winter, maybe they do nothing in the winter. But no, they the close summer, up and a lot of them come to Hawaii. Yes. That's right. No. Yes, it's true. But, you know, uh, Icy Strait Point is definitely a success story because, you know, a lot of the tribes, as we know, may open, whether it's gambling mm -hmm. casinos or just haven't been able to thrive, but because they used their money, invested it in this kind of a entrepreneurial opportunity to bring in tourists to build the uh, port so that ships could dock and then unload massive number of tourists like us to spend money. Uh, when I was in Icy Strait Points, I took a cooking class <laughs> with really? Kamiley Schultz, right? I learned how to, well, <laughs> I just learned cooking? a salmon dip uh. <laughs> and I watched uh, we grilled halibut and salmon, and uh, Sherry Broder and uh, Ned Schultz went on a hike, and then we took a lovely... Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, we went on a lovely tram ride yeah, around the coast to that. see yeah. where the salmon yeah, yeah. Is, is caught. I had the best salmon in my life in uh, the last, last port. Ketchikan. Ketchikan. At Annabelle's, you saw the yeah. picture. That was unbelievable, and yeah. it was too bad the ship didn't have salmon of that quality. <laughs> It was, it was really, really fabulous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I wanted to get to a couple of main conclusions on this. Number one, we're talking about the uh, investment that the Clinkets made in order to build this, this uh, Indian center there. Um, gee whiz, Hawaii doesn't have anything like that. No. For that matter, uh, the ship terminal at Aloha Tower is nothing compared to the ship terminal for the Norwegian cruises. Nothing. Right, right. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, both, at both ends, even in, in uh, the starting point, um, uh, uh, Seward. Seward. It's a nothing fishing town, but they got this really nice terminal. And at, at the Vancouver end, oh, it was beautiful. Right. One, one. Right. And, you know, we don't have that. Why don't we have that? And they have, I don't know whether it's a Jones Act or what. Um, I guess, the, you know, see, the Jones Act says you have to have, you have to have an American ship with an American crew and uh, American, American, something else. Amer three things, American ship, American crew. An American flag in order to go between intercoastal ports. Well, we went to three, four intercoastal ports, and there was a Norwegian flag. I don't know how they deal with the Jones Act problem. There must be mm. some solution there. But what struck me is that they were, over a season and over years, they were delivering virtually millions of tourists yeah. to these towns that had really no significant industry aside from that. Oil is a little slow in that part of Alaska. Yes. Fishing is a big deal, but Relative to tourism, fishing is peanuts. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's what they got. Right, right. Uh, well, Ice Strait Point used to have a salmon cannery, yeah. but it's long since closed. Yeah. And now tourism is yeah. its main industry. Yeah. 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 So we're talking about millions of tourists coming by. I don't know where we missed the boat, literally missed the boat, but Hawaii could be just like all of those places. Hawaii with stops on all the islands by foreign flag vessels like Norwegian cruises. Um, with the foreign crew and all that. 
I, I don't know why we haven't done that. I don't know why we haven't improved our facilities. I don't Money. know why we don't have millions of people. You know, as a destination port, it's much better for you not to have to have the hotels and infrastructure. It's all provided on the ship. Yeah. And, the, and the tourists come off the ship and they buy diamonds or whatever. <laughs> they just lay, lay money all well, over the community. Uh, of course, the type, the geography is so different. And as you know, Juno, the capital of the state, which only has a population of 30,000, which still is kind of uh, mind-boggling when you think of the state capital has only a small population. But the only ways to get to Juno are either by air or by water. ship, by water, by ship or ferry. You can't drive to the state capital. So the shipping... Um, abilities are much more important than for us because we have so many, uh, you know, the ability to travel by plane. That's you know most people. Well, last I far. last I heard, you couldn't drive between here and Maui. We can't, but you know, um, taking a ship from the west coast to Hawaii it takes too many days to make it yeah. efficient. Yeah. So flying is really. It's certainly a different place. Mm -hmm. It's it's really the wild, the wilderness. It was beautiful. The, the last American mm -hmm. wilderness, maybe the last wilderness in the world, it's right there. Mm -hmm. And you can see it eroding as you take the ship. And that's why it's such a precious holiday to take a look at that and, and feel the wildness of it and feel the, you know, the beautiful nature. Un, 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 unspoiled, right. unspoiled nature. Yes. So that made it worthwhile all in all Absolutely. itself. Absolutely, right. And we were visitors, respectful visitors, to that place. What was your favorite port? My, I, you know, I think I, actually I liked a little bit about each of them. And um, in Juneau, we visited um, a museum called the Walter Sobolov um, Museum, which had some wonderful native art. Uh, that was really inspiring. Uh, as I mentioned in Icy Straits Point, getting to grill some fresh salmon and halibut. And as my friend uh, said afterwards, I gave her some. She said, oh, I've never had your cooking. So <laughs> this was my one opportunity to actually <laughs> make something for her. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ketchikan, lovely, lovely town. And then, of course, in, um, uh, I guess it was Ketchikan, we went up to the, no, Skagway, White Pass, Yukon route train, which goes up where the gold oh, mines used to be. Yes, yeah. and lovely views and very desolate and you know. So no, I I, I think I enjoyed every stop yeah, for me different too. reasons. They, they all had their strong points. They were, they were all there were common denominators all around. Mm -hmm. um, but the trip would not have been complete with any one of them. They you had to right. see, mm -hmm. and we did. We saw all the major points along the road mm -hmm. uh, from. Uh, um, that first place again. The uh, first place? The first place. I see start, straight point. Starting, starting. Oh, Seward. Seward. South Seward's of Folly. S all, South of Anchorage. Yeah. Uh -huh. So all in all, it was very interesting. It was, it, it was a getaway of its right. own sort. Mm -hmm. And you had a chance to, you know, be removed and remote for a little while. Right. And so a snapshot of Alaska in 2017. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jay. I'm okay. glad you're back, though. We missed you. <laughs> nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, there's my picture. Oh, Look nice. at that, will you? That's very Off nice. Off the fantail, proceeding southeast. 